As an island nation with a temperate climate, our green fields have ensured that Ireland is famous for its farming and food industries. Now, Irish investigators are taking advantage of emerging technologies in order to try growing crops in innovative ways. Plant breeding is part art and part science, and the art part of it will always remain the same. But a lot more technology is available now in terms of molecular techniques and genetic techniques to identify traits of interest in varieties that can make selection more efficient in the future. New technologies and dedicated research have also opened up new horizons for plant growers in areas like human health and are making substantial advances in the fight against some fatal diseases. Plants are a really important new system for producing large amounts of valuable pharmaceutical proteins. And we're really excited to be at the forefront of the development of the chloroplast production system that could be used to assist in the development of AIDS vaccines. Potato has played a vital role in Irish history. It's the fourth most consumed food in the world. And its nutritional value and high yields will ensure that it plays an increasingly important role in developing countries throughout the world. Potato breeding is an evolving science, which is helping to create new varieties with a range of traits to suit an ever-increasing market, both at home and abroad. Dennis Griffin at Tagusk is enhancing traditional breeding techniques with the help of cutting-edge genetic technology. Tagusk has had a long history. The first breeding program uh, was started here in 1963 by Harry Keogh and Leslie Dowley, and that program has produced up to 35 varieties to date. So if you allow a lead-in time of 10 years for the production of a new variety, it's been one variety per year since then. It's a lengthy process to successfully develop new breeds of potatoes, and they can often be susceptible to a range of diseases, such as potato late blight, which can have a devastating impact on yields. Here at Tagusk Crops Research Centre in Oak Park, Dennis devotes his time to the breeding of new disease-resistant potato varieties in his innovative breeding programme. Each year, an exhaustive process begins. This is the beginning of the entire breeding programme. All the uh, genetic material and the traits that we want are contained within the parents in this glass house. We perform interspecific crosses here between parents with complementary traits. We take flowers before they mature and emasculate them or remove the male anthers. This prevents the flower from self-fertilizing. Then we select a male parent with complementary traits to the, to the female parent. We remove pollen, place it onto the female stigma of the flower. If uh, the fertilization is successful, a berry forms. So if a cross is successful, a potato berry is produced, and this is just what the seed looked like in a berry. We can get up to 200 individual seeds in a berry, and each one at this stage is a genetic individual, but a sibling. We extract the seed over the winter months. Each individual seed here is a potential new variety. And it can take up to 12 years of selection of these and growing of these seedlings to, to, to produce a new variety. This is year two of the potato breeding program. Uh, this is where we plant all our seedlings that we've seen from the crossing house. Each plant here has been produced from one of the true seeds that we've shown. Each plant here represents a potential new variety. This is one example. Um, we've moved from true seed to a tuber generation. You can see that each plant produces three to four small tubers. Because 
we have very little seed. We can do no testing in terms of disease resistance or cooking quality or anything like that. We have to wait until we multiply more seed. So we take one tuber from each plant and these are sown in the field in Wicklow in our isolation centre in Wicklow um, and we begin to select the numbers from there over, over about 10 to 12 years. Out of the 200,000 unique seeds produced in the first year breeding programme, the number of emerging potato varieties is whittled down to one or two over a 12-year period. Dennis and his team then begin to hone in on the seedlings that contain the ideal combination of traits, traits that will ultimately determine the success or failure of the new variety. OK, we're here in Broadway, County Wexford, today doing an early potato trial. This links into our potato breeding programme from about the year 6 to year 12 stage. After the early stage selection, which we've seen, we've narrowed down the number of seedlings to approximately 60. What we try to achieve here is we look at the potatoes on the field to determine how suitable they are for the market. Potato is a very, very uh, difficult crop to select. There are over 50 different traits that we assess uh, in, in the production of a new variety and it ranges from all the cooking and taste characteristics, disease resistance, shape, right through to maturity, flesh colour, texture. It's, it's very difficult to combine all of those traits into one discrete variety. One of the biggest threats to the success of any breeding programme is the susceptibility of those varieties to disease. Blight and pest-based disease are still very much a cause for concern for Irish farmers. Helping Dennis to identify and get to the origins of these and many other traits, one Tagusk investigator, Dan Milborn, is using a very special technique, genetic fingerprinting. Dennis has the, I suppose, unenviable job of selecting varieties based on the expression of genes, the characteristics or traits. My part of the process involves tracking down the genes that are responsible for these traits and giving Dennis the capacity, instead of having to select on the basis of the expression of the gene, which is what you see in the field, give him the capacity to look directly within the plant and I can tell him for definite whether that plant has the gene he's interested in. This is a, a genetic fingerprint of essentially 31 uh, breeding lines in our breeding programme. Now, you, people will be more familiar with the concept of genetic fingerprinting from programmes like uh, CSI and things like that, where they're used in a uh, forensic setting. But we use the exact same kind of technology here in, in the breeding programme to, to try and make the process more efficient. You can read a genetic fingerprint basically as, as, as a sort of molecular barcode, if you like. Each genetically distinct individual will have its own barcode pattern. And each of the bars, or as, as we call them here, bands, that appear on this, uh, on the, on this altar ad is a, essentially a piece of DNA which is either near or is a gene. If you look at enough fingerprints, what you begin to notice is that certain bands on the gel are uh, associated with traits that we're interested in. That becomes a sort of diagnostic marker then for that trait. Uh, I don't know, I think we'll do oxidantally separately. As Dennis identifies new varieties, Dan can identify disease-resistant genetic traits at a very early stage, making the process much more efficient. This new perspective on the potato varieties is vital in an increasingly competitive and changing marketplace. As the um, marketplace changes very quickly nowadays, we see, for example, with climate change, uh, we're getting higher temperatures, we have maybe less rainfall. So as things shift, we need to shift the breeding effort to try and uh, produce material to grow in those conditions. The other aspects we're facing now, for example, chemicals have been withdrawn, chemicals we use to control blight and to control pests. Uh, the list of chemicals available to farmers is reducing all the time, so resistance to pests and diseases is becoming more and more important. The armory the farmers have is becoming smaller and we hope to build more resistance in to PCN, to blight uh, and so on, you know. This is uh, some late blight which has infected a uh, potato seedling. And in crops which haven't been sprayed, the loss can be 100% if you get an early infection in the year. Our climate is, is particularly well suited towards blight. Now resistant varieties would have a lot to contribute in, in, in that context, in that varieties would last longer without fungicide applications, but also um, would need less applications of fungicide. The last two years have been particularly difficult blight years due to the weather conditions. Using genetic fingerprinting, Milborn is now able to identify disease-resistant traits for blight and the potato cyst nematode, or PCN, 
by the presence of DNA markers, which maximizes the chances of selecting new resistant varieties in the future. So we've got something here, if you look at this particular one, there's a band uh, here in this individual, which is associated with uh, resistance to uh, potato cyst nematode or eel worm, which is a, a very, very important pathogen, which is one of the breeding targets for the program to breed resistant varieties to this. It's a soil-borne uh, pathogen. It's a microscopic worm that infests the roots of potatoes. Uh, and the way it's controlled currently is to actually take a very, very toxic um, substances and rotivate them into the top several uh, centimetres of the soil and there's concerns about using these chemicals to control them so developing varieties that are resistant to PCN is a very very important target for breeding programmes worldwide. Here we've managed to develop a, a genetic fingerprinting assay that allows us to uh, select from the breeding material individuals which have a, a gene that confers a very, very strong level of resistance to PCN. And so this allows us to give Dennis information about individuals in the breeding program before he could otherwise actually get that information using a traditional disease resistance test. One of the limiting factors in the production of uh, varieties has been the amount of labour it takes to screen varieties at a very early stage and the amount of potato material which is available to us because most disease resistance tests are very destructive and, 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 and use up plant material. By conducting these genetic tests at a very early stage we can identify the genes and hence the traits of interest and retain those in our programme and increase our selection intensity for those traits and this maximises the chances of us producing more disease resistant varieties in the future. In Oak Park, at the tasting stage of the programme, Dennis gets closer to finding those varieties that will be seen on the supermarket shelf, both here and abroad. As Dan's work on the genetics of the potato progresses, the relationship between breeder and geneticist looks likely to yield even more exciting results. So at the moment, what we're working in what we call an incompletely characterised genome. Chagask is involved in an international consortium of about 15 laboratories worldwide, whose goal is to find the entire genome sequence of potato, much in the way as has been recently done with, with humans. And, and that sort of information is going to make this sort of genetic fingerprinting uh, application within breeding programs much, much easier, much, much more commonplace and much, much more powerful. And we'll be able to do it for more traits than we can at present. These new technologies are never going to replace entirely plant breeding. And I think there's still a necessity for the breeder's eye, but they're going to make the process a lot more efficient into the future.